Hi, welcome to the first ECG in a minute podcast where I'm going to try and go through an ECG in a minute. So here's our first ECG and uh, you can see it's a 12 lead and this rhythm strip. We can see we've got sinus rhythm, P wave, QRS complex, T wave, normal sinus rhythm, PR interval just at the upper limit of normal at uh, about five small squares, but just about creeps in under that. So I think it's not first degree heart blocks, it's sinus rhythm. And what you'll notice about this is we've got broad QRS complexes. Um, so we're thinking, okay, why have we got broad QRS complexes? Is it a bundle branch block? Is there something else going on? Well, it might be a bundle branch block. That's a common one. So let's have a look at lead V1. Uh, this is going predominantly down. And uh, in v, lead V6, it's going predominantly up. So that's left bundle branch block. In right bundle branch block, you'd be getting um, at least some kind of R wave in V1. And uh, you don't have that. It always goes downwards. It's left bundle branch block. So we've got left bundle branch block. Next thing we're going to look at uh, with left bundle branch block is to notice the pattern. So when the QRS complex is upright, we'll get ST depression and T wave inversion. And that's the pattern that you'll notice all the way through these upright leads, ST depression, T wave inversion. Here we are again on this side, ST depression, T wave inversion. When the QRS complex is down, you'll get ST elevation and an upright T wave. And that's exactly what we see. Have a look at the axis. So for the axis, we need to look only at leads v, uh, one and two. And uh, we'll see that they were going upright in lead one, which we're supposed to be doing. So that's normal. But if you look at lead two, the S wave is deeper than the R wave. So it goes more down than up. That means it's an abnormal axis. So if it's doing that in lead two, it's left axis deviation. If it's doing that in lead one, it's right axis deviation. So we've got left axis deviation in this CCG and left bundle branch block. So is that a problem? Why should we have left axis deviation? Well, we often do get left axis deviation in left bundle branch block and it's normal. Two pieces of evidence I want to draw to your attention. First, an abstract from Ken Dodd in Minnesota from Steve Smith's group which shows um, that uh, we do have a slightly leftward axis in patients with left bundle branch block. Um, in fact, here we are, patients without MI. This is the median QRS axis, and this is the interquartile range. It's minus 42.7. The normal range is up to minus 30. So that means that over 25% of people have an, an abnormal axis. And in fact, almost 50% of people have an abnormal axis, left axis deviation, when they have left bundle branch block. So it's quite a normal finding in left bundle branch block. However, if you do see left axis deviation in left bundle branch block, Patients are more likely to have organic heart disease like valvular heart disease or cardiomyopathy. Here you see evidence from this study in 1997 showing that the specificity of left, left axis deviation for organic heart disease is 92%. So if you see left axis deviation in left bundle branch block, it's quite common, but have a think about whether that might represent organic heart disease in your patient. Thanks.